everyone, it's Elizabeth. Um, we have a visitor today. She's meowing at me. Let's see if she'll let me pick her up. Oh, yes. This is Catherine. She goes by Cat. And she does not like being held, but she does like being loved. So she might show up every once in a while and just be like, ha, ah, love me, but that's okay. So yeah, so it's the end of October. Uh, we have a couple of days left, actually technically about a week. Um, and so if Stranger Things comes out on Friday, which I've been telling everyone about, and, um, geez. and then uh, Halloween comes out. Halloween comes out. Halloween's on Tuesday. I still don't know what I'm going to be, if I'm going to be anything. Adulthood kind of sucks that way. I might just like paint my nails black and like dye my hair purple and be like, I'm a witch. That, it's kind of a cop out, but what are you going to do? Um, so yeah, so the next week I will upload my, my books read for October. Um, and actually I did a lot of reading this month and I'm really proud of myself. Like, ooh, good job me. Um, and it has almost entirely to do with audiobooks. Still books. Um, but in the meantime, I thought I would do my TBR pile. I don't actually know how you say that. Is it the to be read pile or is it the to read pile? If it's to read, then there's no B and I don't know what to do with it, but whatever, it's okay. Uh, so I've picked a few books. Uh, three of them are online. Um, one of them was given to me as a, a gift on Kindle uh, and then two of them I'm going to use for my Audible subscription. Um, but I wanted to show you some of the books that I've chosen to read. So one of the books that I want to reread this November is actually Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I read this kind of, the super abridged version when I was 11 or so. And like back then, I thought it was crap. I was like, yo, like bad things keep happening to her. Her best friend like dies. She goes to this like creepy manor where like the guy's a jerk and like, she falls in love with him and then her student's supposed to be all like, I'm a good student, except she's kind of a little punk ass, at least in like the version that I read. So this is all the version that I read when I was like 11, okay? So the super abridged version. Um, and like, and then she runs away and then comes back to the asshole who's now blind. And I just didn't get it when I was 12. I was like, this is stupid. I don't no, none of this is all right. So it took me a really long time to actually pick up like the legit version of Jane Eyre. Um, I had a friend who was just like, oh my gosh, I love it. And I was like, Pfft. but eventually I picked it up and um, picked it up to read officially about three years ago, uh, four years ago, now that I think about it. And I loved it. And I did not love it because of the romance, which I'm still kind of a little bit like, hmm, about. Um, I really loved it because of Jane. Jane is super cool and like, she's just continuously, I, I'm not going to say positive because she's not like obnoxiously optimistic, but she always remains hopeful and she always gives people grace. But then when they go too far, like Mr. Frickin' Rochester, um, I had to look at the back because I was like, it's not Heathcliff, it's Rochester. Anyway, um, which I haven't read that one either and I don't really want to, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but yeah, like when Mr. Rochester's all like, hey Jane, you want to get married to me even though I'm already married? Like there's like this beautiful paragraph in there that is just like, takes my breath away. And it is just such a great moment of character. And so I always try to reread this every once in a while. Um, it's been a couple of years since I've reread it, and so I thought, what the hell, why not? It's a perfect November gothic kind of read. Um, so yeah, so this will be perfect for my cozy nights in with my big socks and my bath bombs and my coffee and my wine. And it's going to be a good time. Um, so yeah, so Jane Eyre. Then the other book that I am wanting to read that I... Oh, I thought I misplaced it. Um, is... Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk by Kathleen Rooney. It is a book of the month uh, book that I got last year. I don't 
really remember how I ended up signing up for Book of the Month. I think one of my other friends did it, and she referred me, and so I got a free book. And at that point, I was like, oh, books every month? Yeah! Uh, so I did get a couple of these, but, I mean, as is often the case, I never actually got around to reading mostly any of them. So this one I picked up the other day because she's just looks so cheerful and wonderful and I like the blue hat. I'm a big fan of colorful accessories, like big fan. So um, the Lily and Boxfish, Boxfish Takes a Walk so far is, I mean, as in like the five pages that I've read, is about an elderly woman who was an advertising, one of the, like the first and biggest female advertisers in New York City back in the 1930s. Well, it's like 1980s and she's still there. And she's very much like that typical old New York woman who like wears a mink coat and like dresses to the nines just because like, screw you, I can. And, um, and she has a son who doesn't live with her anymore. Um, he lives in like Maine or something like that. And he's constantly worrying about her and he's just like, oh, mom, though, New York is crazy and you shouldn't live there anymore. And, like, on the one hand, I'm like, dude, stop it. Because, like, I've lived in New York and I've also lived in Istanbul and I've lived in a lot of weird places, honestly. And, like, every time something happens, like, my parents, not my parents, my parents were pretty much almost always fine with it. But my family back home, some of them would just be like, are, are you sure you don't want to come home? And I'd be like, ah, it's fine. Like, bomb threats, who cares? I still got to go to work. It's all good. Um, so I identify with that. But then also, uh, yeah, New York in the 80s was not exactly a walk in the park. My parents used to live in New York in the 80s, and, like, my mom would visit me when I lived there, and she would just be like, oh, my God, it's so much nicer than it used to be. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm not dead yet. So <laughs> I think I'm going to enjoy this. We'll see. Um, so, yeah, so the other books that I am going to read, these are the digital ones that I've chosen. Uh, one of them is Hillbilly Eulogy. A Memoir of a Family and Culture in Crisis by J.D. Vance. And I'll put the little picture up there. Up there. And um, this one was given to me by my, by my cousin Kate on Kindle. Um, she, I guess, knew the guy who wrote it, actually. And so she was just... we. She grew up in Southern Ohio. I spent my childhood in Southern Ohio. Um, so she was just, she sent this to me and was like, yeah, I knew the guy who wrote this and, you know, I think you would really enjoy it. Well, and I was kind of like, all right, great. Yeah. And then I obviously never read it. Um, but as the months have gone on, I've heard more and more people say how important it is to read this book at this juncture in our history, um, because it really gives an insight into the dying white American middle class um, and just sort of the mentality that's going with that and because I am a part of the dying white American middle class I am very curious to see what he has to say about this um, So that's one of the things that I'm going to read the other one that I'm going to read is the year of living Danishly my 12 months unearthing the secrets of the world's happiest country by Helen Russell so um, I I am a thousand percent picking out this book because of the Hugo movement. Like, I've been really, this is my first year in West Virginia, and from what I've heard, the winters are like, do not screw around. I am not used to that. Like, even when I was living in Istanbul, we had one winter that was kind of like, woo, no good, and that one was, like, not that bad, actually. Um, so I am really like especially now that I have my own place like that I'm decorating um I mean my husband's obviously helping too that's why we have all these cool Legos um I'm getting into that so that I saw this of you know my my year of living Danishly or whatever um and I decided to that I would like to read it or rather listen to it on audible um I have a friend whose father is Danish, and I had a few Danish friends when I was in Turkey, and they all are very chill, cool people, uh, so we will see. I don't know. I'll get back to y'all on that one. 
So then the last book that I want to read this month, or rather listen to, is The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. I a thousand percent picked out this book initially because the cover was bomb. Like, it is so freaking cool. I am showed you my broken phone. The thing's gonna be right there. I keep getting used to this. Anyway, and I a thousand percent chose it because the cover, because that cover is real cool looking. And also, like, I'm a sucker for, like, period mysteries involving monsters and stuff. Uh, I read The Wonder by Emma Donahue last year. That was the actual first book that I read uh, from the book of the month. While I didn't necessarily enjoy that one, I have hopes for this one. Um, the reason I didn't really enjoy The Wonder, and I'll probably make a video about this later, is honestly that the dichotomy between the religious and the scientific was like kind of really grossly exaggerated. And I'm going to defend that for people who have read The, the Wonder. My issue with it was that the nurse, who was supposed to be this paragon of science, refused to look outside of her own experiences as a nurse and actually look at it as a scientist and say, okay, there has to be a logical explanation for this. Let's look at this woman's, let's look at this little girl's symptoms and go from there, as opposed to just assuming that she's lying and just be like, ah, she's lying. And like, it was just a very frustrating book to read. Now, The Essex Serpent is about a recently widowed mother who moves to kind of the middle of nowhere and there is something there called the Essex Serpent and it's supposed to be this monster and so it's supposed to kind of be another one of those like science versus superstition kind of things which again I'm always super interested in but if it's done well. So we will see if it's done well. I have high hopes for it. The cover's awesome so let's let's see what happens. So yeah, so those are the books that I plan on reading in October. Next week I will, not October, I'm sorry, November. Um, next week I will upload a video of the books that I have read in October. And I'm currently still reading a few of them. We gotta use that time, yo. And in the meantime, I would love to hear from you guys. Uh, what do you think about the books that I've mentioned? Do you have, are you excited about them? Have you already read them? Did you love them? Did you hate them? If you hate it, I'm like, don't be super specific about it. Just be like, oh, I didn't love it. Just because I want to, I, I want to go into this like with like a blank slate. Um, do you have any feelings about The Wonder by Emma Donahue? Because I certainly do. Uh, and yeah, tell me how your October went, what you guys are doing for Halloween. Are you pumped about November because Thanksgiving is awesome? Uh, let me know in the comments and I will see you guys later. Bye.